I know this might sound crazy, guys, but another YouTuber or another streamer, another content creator has created a financial um, apparatus that functions as a scam. I know. I think this is the first time it's ever happened. Today we're talking about a bank promoted by YouTubers that's now become a casino and users can't get their money out. This video is sponsored by Yada Safe. Yada, why? Okay, that's a little bit different. So they're sponsored by it. They're not actually starting it. Okay, let's finish the rest of it. ETA. Yada Savings. The Yada Savings app. Maybe you saw a couple people talk about this. Yes, I have seen people talk about Yada recently. Mm -hmm. Hey, my name is Daniel. Um, my wife and I, our family has 18,000 uh, in Yada that we can't get out. Why wouldn't you just put it in like Bank of America or like uh, Wells Fargo? I would put it in there. For sixty thousand dollars, frozen Bank, up in Yada. Fifteen thousand four hundred forty dollars and six cents frozen in Yada. Fifteen seven thousand two hundred seventy and sixty cents. I mean, to be fair, I've used an app that's froze thirty grand from me, and I still didn't get that fucking money back. But that's because they thought I was money laundering. That was a little. It's a little bit different. Five hundred eighty-three dollars, ninety-eight thousand dollars frozen in Yoda. What app though? I tell y'all it wasn't Cash App. I use Cash App now. It's never froze my account for money laundering, not even once. I'll take every fucking Cash App sponsor I can get. No, that's not it, it, it actually we did have an ad for them. But like I'll tell y'all that right now. I use that I use that app all the time. Never froze my account for money laundering. Four thousand, give or take frozen. Forty six thousand six hundred and ninety nine dollars. Damn, yeah, forty six thousand dollars. We're gonna break down what happened. Okay. Let's start with the basics. A few years ago, Yada Savings advertised itself as a Play no, the no lose lottery. I'm gonna be real. Yes, obviously there should be accountability, but if you put your money in something that says you were in a no lose lottery, you played yourself. You did. That's you should not have done that. You dumb. You dumb as hell. You stupid as fuck. What are you doing? What are you thinking? Lose lottery through YouTube. What are you thinking? What the fuck are you, you get doing? get a lottery ticket by saving money rather than spending wait, it. Wait, 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 what? YouTubers, where you'd get a lottery ticket by saving money rather than spending it. It's called, called gamified savings. And some... Of course it's gamified savings, and of course they want to give you that, because they're probably using that as a tool so they can use your money to invest it and then collect money off of the interest that the investments create. So they're trying to create a reward structure around investing more money into the, into the bank. That's yeah, obviously. Like a bank? Yeah, but like it's, it's the, the gamification is new. Just like a bank. Yeah, exactly. Right? took it beyond a sponsorship and bought equity in the company because they liked the idea that much. The most viral example okay. of this was Graham Stephan, who claimed that I bought a bank. I decided to invest an undisclosed amount, and now I can officially say I am a small owner in Yada Bank. Now these videos are deleted, as Yada has become more than a harmless savings app, and users can't get their money out. But to understand why what not, exactly Why happened, not just give people their money? I don't understand. Hopefully CoffeeZilla can help me understand. Why don't we just just give people their money? Just be like, oh, oops, that's my bad. All right, we'll just give you your money. But where is it? Where did the money go? Where's the money? Happened. Let's first go back to when they demanded an apology from me back in 2022. They made a brief appearance in a video called The Most Evil Business in the World. And for some reason, they didn't like the cameo. I wonder why. They said, quote, given these false claims, we would like you to issue a statement in a video clarifying that your claim that Yada is a scam is false and misleading. Now, I never said that exactly, so I didn't apologize, but I found the next bit a bit more baffling. They tell me, quote, you could also conduct an interview with Adam Molis, the co-founder and CEO of Yada, if you wish. How convenient. Which I found odd. Either way, I decided to today. Well, take they're just trying to get more people, get their, their name out there. I think that's really what their goal is. By the way, for context, Steven was advertising FTX for every video whenever they weren't uh, charged. Well... What a surprise. 
up on their offer two years later when I checked back in on Yada and found customers' accounts have been frozen and their website looked more like a casino than a no lose. Wait, what? This is a no lose. It's a no lose? Well, like, okay, let me do some logic here though, right? So if it's a no lose lottery and you get 0.4 of your investments back, so if you put a hundred dollars into this pachinko machine and it's no lose and you get 0.4 back, that means you get $40 back. What happened to the $60? The world will never know. Lose lottery. On their app, Yada now offers let dice blackjack right. that you can lose money on. Now, honestly, I was shocked by this. Well, how this could you lose money? I thought you said you can't. I thought it says no lose. How could you lose money? That doesn't make sense. The same company that's saying play the no lose lottery, regular yeah. lottery. Yeah, no, that's different. Maybe, maybe it's a no lose lottery, but this is a casino game, so you can lose this one, but you can't lose the lottery. The question is define winning. No, it's define losing. <laughs> Or scams, they prey on innocent people. Now they're offering gambling. So of course I reached out to the CEO and he told me Yada is not actually gambling. Quote, we decided to pivot the business into sweepstakes earlier this year. Sweepstakes is not gambling. We worked extensively with lawyers in the space to build out the program. Now I don't know which lawyer told Yada blackjack isn't gambling, but it's time to get your money back. All Yada is. Do people buy this shit? <laughs> And, and this is the reason why, like, this is crazy to me. How do you, actually, I know why people buy this. I'm going to tell you guys why. The reason why they buy this, and like by buy, I mean like, you know, buy into, right? As in like believe. They believe this shit because they want to. They want to believe it because they are desperate is really doing is running a loophole. The CEO says you can't actually buy Yada Cash, but this is a very sneaky claim because one way to get Yada Cash is, to invest is by purchasing money, right? tokens on the app. These tokens. I have a chart for this. Yeah, I have an image for this. Yeah. You guys understand the difference here? That's that's real cute. ...are pointless, except that they come with free Yada Cash. Spend $10, get 13 free Yada Cash there to gamble with. The more you spend, the more free Yada Cash you get. It's really just a stupid loophole to claim that this is all... Okay, so you can spend money and you get the money. Okay, so you're spending... All right, yeah. That's a yada bullshit, bro. It sure is. All of sweepstakes and that blackjack, dice, and roulette are somehow not mm -hmm. gambling, which is, of course, ridiculous. But most interesting, I think, is the admission from the yada CEO that, quote, yes, this is at odds with the initial mission to encourage savings. The savings based business model wasn't working, so we decided to pivot. You can make your own. What does this say? You can make your own moral judgment of whatever you want, and that's fine. Well, it's not really a moral judgment, right? It's like a logical conclusion. If the only way then you that you can obtain the currency is by spending currency, then you have to spend money to get the currency, and the money can then be redeemed for currency. That's gambling. Based off of this argumentation, using chips at a casino would be the same thing. And therefore, it would not be gambling. Like, I, I, you can technically get some free coin by writing them a mail since it's a sweepstakes. The currency can't be, can't be redeemed for money. They don't let you. Well, then why do you have the money? Why, why do you, what is the currency? You don't get the money back? Well, then why do you get the money? What does the cash do? What's the purpose to having it and spending it and betting it? Pivot. But pivot to what? To the exact thing your system was designed to fight stupid lotteries that waste people's money and you pivot to just 
getting people hooked on actual gambling? Is that it? Yeah. It's like me starting a methadone clinic only to pivot to selling heroin because that's where the real money is. It's well, it makes sense, right? I mean, you build up a customer base of people that have been taken advantage of by a system, and then you start using the system that took advantage of them against them because it's like, basically, it's like if a lion is like, like, imagine if you're a lion and you want to make a support group from other gazelles that can't outrun lions. I feel like this would be a very profitable venture in the long term. You know, like this seems extremely coincident, like very, very positive. Always been a lot. Yeah, that's amazing. Exactly. Yeah, that's so predatory of truth. Why? Wow, there it is. Really ridiculous. And I told their CEO as much. And to my surprise, he responded uh -oh. asking me for help. Quote, you can make your own moral judgment of whatever you want. That's fine. But the issue that matters is that our customers haven't been able to access their funds for nearly three weeks. I think you can help. And honestly, He's right. I do want to help Yada's customers not getting their money, but I can't ignore that Yada is a savings app that became a casino. The exact thing. Well, I mean, again, like it's just convenient, right? Because if you already have people investing their money here, they don't have to worry about giving the casino. It's like if Bank of America started the casino, this would be pretty convenient because you've already got all your money there. So you don't need to worry about transferring it. They were fighting, and that's disgusting. Yeah. Two, YouTubers brought people into a financial product that is now broken, and rather than address right. it, most of them have gone radio silent. Some are deleting their original videos. Now, of course, most of the- I think it's hard for a YouTuber to take accountability for what a company does. I think with the guy that obviously purchased ownership, he should take accountability for it, because obviously he has accountability for it as an owner of the company. But if you just take a sponsor from something, you can't be directly responsible for everything that sponsor does in perpetuity. I think that's kind of unfair. But uh, deleting the video is definitely a good thing. These YouTubers who promoted it had no idea Yada was yeah. going to pivot from savings how, to gambling. Yeah, that's not fair to them. Like, they, they can't know that. How could they have possibly known that? Or that users' accounts would be frozen. But this is all the more reason that YouTubers should not be getting in the business of promoting financial products, especially finance YouTubers. I've spoken to a lot of these people. I think that's probably a good point. And there's definitely a line for that, for sure. But it's also important to keep in mind that anything can pivot to anything as well. Like, there's a lot of different websites that have pivoted to doing something that's, like, bad, like, way later on. And you can't really hold people accountable after the fact because nobody has a crystal ball where they can see the future. But yeah, whenever you're a finance content creator, it's like, it's a little bit shady. I disagree. It's on the user's discretion and not be an idiot. Responsibility is determined by the courts. Shaw is getting sued uh, for FTX bads. Yeah, I'm not sure about the specifics. I don't think it's smart to not sponsor a product you don't try yourself. Yeah, but like, what if they tried it and it worked and then the pot, the product changed in the future? Are you like proactively accountable for a mistake that's going to happen a year after the sponsorship? I don't think that's fair. How, how could you... Like, that? that's crazy. People, they all tell me the same thing. Oh, I feel so bad. It's not my fault. Yeah. I had no idea. And that's all fine. Yeah. But when people bring up your name as an explicit reason they got into this savings account, it starts to ring a lot more hollow. So my brother actually told me about it. I'm pretty sure he found it through the Graham video. I would have been Graham Steph. Uh, Stephen Graham video. Graham Stephens. Graham Stephen video. Graham Stephen came out with a, uh, a video. Graham Stephen, Andre Jack guys that I like as, you know, financial YouTubers. Yeah, this is the reason I hold financial YouTubers to a higher standard. Overwhelmingly, I find them to be more influential. Although I have to say- it Well, it's not that you hold them to a higher standard. It's that they, and I think also like, it's not more influential. It's the consequences of their influence are more severe. So if you're giving somebody financial advice and they're spending a tremendous amount of money on that, now, I, and I also think that, again, this is always a, if you're letting a YouTuber tell you what to do, you're an idiot, and you kind of, to some degree, deserve to lose your money. Like, there's, like, two different things. Like, I don't feel bad for anybody who invests money into a bank because of a YouTuber that told them to. I'm sorry. I don't feel bad for them at all. I think you get what you fucking deserve. 
However, this does really suck for them. It does. Again, I don't hold them or anyone else personally responsible. Yeah, sure. I hold them all irresponsible for promoting financial products. This is I not think this is fair, right? If CoffeeZilla wants to say just overall it's irresponsible and you shouldn't promote financial products, totally fair for him to say that. Like promoting Dollar Shave Club, where yeah. people get a product and that's it. If the company goes bust, it doesn't matter. Financial products are different. You are asking people to put their money somewhere. If in five Good years point. that goes bust, yep. people are going to remember you advertised it to them. That's true. And if you're uncomfortable with that, if you think your bank might blow up in five years, don't promote it. Shill a VPN and have a nice day. But if you insist on telling people the best place to put hey. their money, you better not be upset when they listen. By the way, as I was yeah. editing this video, someone released a podcast sponsored by, you guessed it, Yada. Oh, This episode is brought to you by Yada. Ooh. This is despite the fact that currently withdrawals are frozen. and So you can put the money in. It's like the, uh, what is it, Hotel California. <laughs> you can put the money in, but it can never leave. Now, I want to there pivot myself yeah. and talk about frozen funds, which is a huge problem that goes beyond Yada and influencers. It's eternally safe, Since yeah. early May, many fintechs, including Yada and Juno and many uh -huh. others, have had all their user funds frozen. Up to 200,000 accounts are affected, and it's well, for it's many reasons that surprised users. See, most people saw these companies like Yada as banks. Remember, Graham Stephan even said, I bought a bank. I just bought a bank. But this is Yeah, that would mean it's a bank. People would think it's a bank because he said it was a bank. That makes sense. Because you can put like, because if you say it's a bank, they would think it's a bank. Yeah, it's a good point. Quite accurate. These are fintech companies, not banks. They're not yeah. holding anyone's money. They're not FDIC insured. They have a That's convenient for them that they're not FDIC insured. FDIC is what it like it it it's like a it was a response to I believe the Great Depression, like runs on a bank in the Great Depression. And it says that you can have up to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in a bank that's federally insured. Bank they work with that is FDIC insured, and that's where your money is sent to. In this case, the main bank is called Evolve. Normally, this distinction doesn't matter, yeah. but when things go wrong, it makes all the difference. So does the distinction that fintech companies like Yada. Well, then don't why work can't they just get the money from Evolve if the money went to Evolve? directly with Evolve, they have a middleman called Synapse. And I want you to think of Synapse as an adapter from old tech to new tech. Okay. It's kind of like your iPhone dongle. Remember that? Connecting a lightning cable to a headphone jack. That's Synapse connecting banks to FinTech. And I know I'm not exactly an expert on this. So I brought in someone who is to explain okay. what happened because the next part gets kind of confusing. My name is Jason Mikula. You know, I spent about over a decade in fintech and banking, including Hi, Jason. Goldman Sachs. So I have I have some experience in the sector. What actually has gone wrong here? So the sort of proximate cause was on. Do you work at Goldman Sachs and you have a mic or a webcam that is from 2009. Have a better webcam. What are you doing? Saturday, May 11th, uh, Synapse, which is this is. technology so. middleware provider or yeah. banking as a service provider. Yeah, he's saving the money. You're right. You're right. He's probably investing in the money. Good point. To what in the court filings is being referred right. to as, as this technology middleware provider or banking as a service provider revoked Evolve Bank's access to what in the court filings is being referred to as the dashboard, uh, which is basically Synapse's IT systems, uh, including actual ledger information. And so when Synapse revoked access to that information on Saturday, May 11th, Evolve functionally froze all of those programs by ceasing to process payments. So Evolve's decision to respond to Synapse revoking that access is what led to users being unable to access their funds beginning on May 11th and continuing through to the present. People are saying, oh, it's FDIC insured. Why isn't that working? Yeah, yeah so it is end users confusion is entirely understandable, right? One of the great successes of the American banking sector and American banking regulation yes, yes, is that yeah. you, generally speaking, don't have to worry about whether or not your money is safe. However, 
that in this case, uh, and it's, it's not the only case, has engendered some confusion for end users who see FDIC insured and and read that as this is safe, my money's safe, I'm gonna get Why my money back. Why is that not true? Now, what is FDIC insurance and what does it do? It protects depositors and users in the event that a bank fails. Um, that's because the bank hasn't the bank hasn't failed. That's crazy. <laughs> oh my god. A bank has not failed here. Uh, and so there I is no not. direct role for the FDIC to step in. If Evolve had failed, the FDIC would step in, seize the bank, Man. Uh, and sort of figure out the next steps. That's obviously not what's unfolding here. Right. So if you have money frozen, it is FDIC insured from a bank failure. But in this case, banks haven't failed. It's the in-between layer that has, meaning your funds are stuck until this is fixed. But it's not exactly clear when that will be because Evolve and Synapse can't agree on who owes what. The founder of Synapse... says it's all in Evolve's control. We are doing everything we can to release funds. Oh my Meanwhile, god. Meanwhile, Evolve says Synapse's records are wrong. Quote, recent ledgers and data do not align with the actual movement of funds oh. in and out of Evolve. Basically, someone is lying. Or even worse, doesn't know what the truth is. And this isn't a disagreement mm. about a few pennies. It's $150 million being argued about. But according to new reporting from the information- $150 million. Holy shit. That's insane. Such discrepancies were known about for at least two years before the revoked dashboard and Synapse's bankruptcy. I mean, this could have been avoided, but it wasn't. Leaving a bankruptcy trustee to pick up the pieces and hundreds of thousands of accounts frozen. And we don't know who owes who what or oh my when God. we'll find out. But all I have to say is who cares? People need their money yeah, back. Yeah, that's a good point, right? That, that, that's, and this is like another thing. I'm really glad that he's bringing this up, is that at the end of the day, people put their money in the bank and they can't get their money out of the bank. You can uh, have conversations and it's, oh, well, this is the way that the law is written and it's supposed to be this way and that's the way it is. But at the end of the day, you go and you're like, can I get my money? And they say no. Well, you just got fucking scammed because you can't use your money. Just passing your money through two different entities before it's actually in the bank leaves more room for exploit? No way. Yeah. They were told these fintech programs were safe. Now they're stuck. Mm -hmm. Look, after talking to the people affected, I get it. Banking is complicated, especially as I spoke to Jason, that became super cool. I love that, like, especially it's the same thing as saying video games, whenever a surfer breaks down or, like, the servers stop working. Look, guys, making a game is hard. Like, imagine, like, calling a uh, fucking Chase Bank, like, yeah, can I get my, uh, my money? Yeah. Here's the thing. There's, we got a lot of numbers. And we gotta keep track of so many numbers. Like, I mean, look, this shit ain't easy, all right? So we're going to figure it out. We'll let you know what happens. Clear. But historically, this hasn't stopped us from helping the elite when complex banking problems come up. Remember Silicon Valley Bank? And look, I know it's a different story. But back right. then, we moved heaven and earth to make sure startup founders got their money back oh. beyond the FDIC insurance limit. Out of concern for the rich and powerful, we bent the rules. What a surprise. And all I'm saying is... I get that this is also not a traditional FDIC insurance case, but dare I say we give regular Americans the same level of urgency and empathy. Well, it's we really simple. Like they get their money in the bank. They should be able to get their money out of the bank. And especially whenever they're adding in casino games, like this is clearly not good faith. It's obviously not good faith. What are we even talking about? It's not even a question. 
gave to Silicon Valley founders. Yeah. We decided to bend the rules for them. It's been three weeks with no end in sight, and these people have mortgages to pay, taxes, bills, and quibbling about the middleman or the bank whose fault it is is to miss the point. Trust me, there's yeah. plenty of blame to go around in this story. But for the immediate future, let's focus on getting these people their money back before they're punished for something that isn't their fault. Yeah. Because time is of the essence. Even if these people eventually get their money back. Well, no, it's of the essence because most people, like, isn't it like the majority of people live paycheck to paycheck? And I can guarantee you the kind of person that makes a financial decision based off of what a YouTuber tells them is probably not in a good financial position to begin with. That's probably why they invested the money in the bank to begin with. So, like, these people need their fucking money because they need to spend it. Yeah, it's especially worse for them. The win matters just as much yeah. as people with frozen accounts told me. I mean, it means everything to me. I, you know, I, I, have, I wasn't able to pay rent for this month. I wasn't able to pay my bills. I quit my job. I quit my career to go into business for my family and my savings is my, uh, my safety net for doing that, for making such a crazy decision. Yeah, it is a crazy decision. So it means a lot. We really have no safety net. I mean, even if yeah, that see, money's not see. gone, it's gone for us for now. My wife and I have been saving for our first home. If this takes months, years to drag out, it's gonna delay our home. Well, the good thing about saving for your house is that the money now will be worth less than whenever you get the money back. Which is, that's like a little cute bonus, right? Is that not only are they holding the money, but they're also preventing the money from generating interest in a way that's meaningful. Uh, so it, it's like it in WoW, like imagine the servers go down for just you, but everybody else is able to keep leveling. You come back, you're only level 30, everybody else is level 45. You can't get a group for Scarlet Monastery at all. Nobody wants to play with you. Been saving essentially for three to four years, and... Uh, was saving up for a wedding and uh, to buy a home and you know as soon as this stuff happened mm -hmm. um that was actually the first week that i needed to pay off the deposits for the wedding so that's convenient pretty it hurt me quite a lot that yeah, sucks C the ceo did not respond for a comment Adam Modella, CEO of Yada, responded, all regulators seem to be pointing fingers at each other. They are saying that there hasn't been a bank failure, so it's not their problem. I'm hopeful that your coverage can get that changed in the regard. I do feel like these are kind of like two separate problems. So like the Yada bank problem where you have to spend money in order to get a currency that you're able to use in order to gamble, like that's one problem. And then the bank getting shut down is a separate problem. And I think that, like, the first problem implies the second problem happened voluntarily. Or, like, they didn't care about it. Because, like, you see, like, obviously the foundation of the video is built off of gambling. This is a bank that's, that's like, you know, moved to gambling. And this is bad. And, like, this is an implication that, like, the bank is predatory, takes advantage of you. And then there's, like, this FDIC thing. And it could actually be an instance where, like, Yada might not have done anything, like, crazy wrong in this situation. But it just looks a thousand times worse because they've introduced, like, casino mechanics to the uh to the website and also here's another factor yada is a company a company exists to make money and so why do you have the casino mechanics why 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 not just get rid of them money right there it's because they're making money off of it that's what i would say I think it's fucking obvious, too. Dragon's Dogma 2 DLC tomorrow? No, there's no, no DLC tomorrow. What are you talking about? Yeah, they want to normalize loss. Ah, uh, that's smart. That's smart. I like that. Crypto messaging. Yeah, it's a good idea. Not trying to be an asshole, but feels bad for these guys, but they're really playing games with their money. Yeah, no, I mean, I think that, like, again, like, CoffeeZilla is, I think, probably... Like, nobody does better work for, like, investigation into this, like, financial fraud. 
Uh, I, I'm really happy to see him do another video for this, right? It's like, you know, the crypto zoo thing. There was the... Oh, fuck. Like, there was another really big one. I can't remember even what it was. He's the best one for certain. Yeah, FTX. Yeah, FTX was the huge one. That's, that's what it was. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. Please give it a sub. Give him a like. Like, he's, he's amazing. Absolutely. Why wouldn't you actually just gamble? Because people are dumb, man. I feel bad, but I think you're a complete retard for listening to YouTubers. I think that you're stupid for making a decision like this. Like, why do you put your money in Yada Bank rather than something like Wells Fargo? I think it is a bad decision. Or like a, a local credit union or something like that. Like, it's just, a, it's a bad decision. And like, and this is the problem, right? Is like, you're having two conversations at the same time that like people are making stupid decisions with their money, but at the same time, the stupid decisions with their money don't justify the fact that the people are taking advantage of them, right? So it's like a person is stupid and in a, in a way, I don't feel bad for them for being taken advantage of. But at the same time, the person who's taking advantage of them, that doesn't necessarily absolve them of guilt. So like anybody who put a lot of money into this account is a fucking moron, right? You're an idiot for doing that. However, just because somebody's stupid doesn't mean that you have the right to take advantage of them. It just means that I have the right to not care. Or sorry, to not feel sorry for them.